praying to God. And at this time, the person you know, will be doing the, the prayer, the overall prayer. And we all will pray this morning. We are here this morning. And there's so much to give thanks, God thanks for. Even just to be in his house. Some of us have not been here for a while. But we know that our God is an evil God. He is indeed a good God. He is indeed an amazing God. And so we have prayed and God has answered. And this morning we just want to give him thanks. As the sacristan come to pray, let us all pray in Jesus' name.
St. Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 4. Sorry. St. Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 23 to verse 28. Okay. Okay. St. Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 23 to verse 23. <clears throat> Living by faith.
and fire and sword. Pray in the name of Jesus. Today we have made a vow, and today we are determined that we will be true to Him till death. Pray in the name of Jesus. At this time, I can serve the minister of Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus, everybody.
aspect of the worship service. Always join in online. Um, but as was asked, for those of us who want to give a testimony, to speak of when one exercises his or her faith in God's ability, what wonders can be performed in their life. It's instantaneously, there seems to be a connect that brings me back to when I was instructed to spend more time in reading and seeking God's assistance in understanding and applying what I've read in my life. And I'm here to tell you that I did just say and the blessings that has been bestowed upon me as a result of being obedient is um, maybe will take an hour to explain. I, my life has seen a complete turnaround. I am more humble if that word could be applied to me. If not, I, I to spending enough time, the right amount of time, in an understanding, a deeper, fuller understanding of the Word of God, and apply it in my life, and in those that are in my immediate, and not so immediate surroundings, and I'm here to tell you also that it started bearing food. At home, I'm cooler, I'm cooler guy. With my relatives, I am I am not <laughs> at work. I still give a little trouble at work. Yes, sir. I still ask the hard questions. But the results are beginning to. And I have, I have, I have, as I said before, beginning and continuing to allow him to work the works in me so that the result would be greater works that he has prepared for me still to do. It's a process and I don't know where it would lead, but if it was up to my will, then I would say, okay, now God, it's all right right here and I'm satisfied. But he is saying, not my will, not Michael's will, but you have to, to faith, allow me to work my will in your life. And the rewards will be great. The rewards, not only the financially will be great, the rewards will be socially great, the rewards will be relationship great, the rewards will be academically great for me. And I'm here to report, to report that I am a different man from when you lost some. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yeah!
any capacity, even as a foot soldier, that God would have me. You pray, my friend, as I submit continually to doing what I think I should have been doing all along. But, brethren, it, it has been. It has been such a rewarding experience and exercise over the last couple of months in my life. That the emotions, they are just only a small portion of the joy I'm feeling. Of the joy I'm feeling. And I'm not going to lose it. So Lord, I pledge publicly to serve him in any capacity you choose to have me serve in your And uh, when she get to the fourth year, she could move on because she failed and some of her, you know, classes are still to carry on. And I paid a school fee for the semester to go back to school. And when it was at some time, the other told me that, Mommy, I did not go to school, you know, so I can't go in this one. So that she was always coming, oh God. And since I've got to get the virgin in this man, the Holy Ghost church virgin then. Sister Penny, come on again. I want to meet Sister Penny, you know, she look out the other people kids, not on the earth. But you can talk to her about your children or the child. And depend on her to help the pray, Sister Morris, you know, my pastor, Bishop Far, and I'm so prior. And we did pray. And we did pray. And since I've got my man a certain, I realize. Change. Then no one stops there to me anymore. She goes on still to say, I don't even know why I'm not going to say. She said, Mommy, you want to study. I mean, no one, her time really struck me. No one has to do my schoolwork. And the child got on there saying, I'm a believer, I'm a believer. And she knows, she's studying, she's studying, she's studying. Study. Until eventually, just the other day, Yanni gets a call that she's going to have some letter to all the different schools that you can think of. And the first one that you need to send her letter to, um, but that happened to call her, it was RNG Primary School, just a little top and not a big. And when she do, you know, when she got for the interview and she finished, they said that they would have called her. And while Yanni was walking out, Yanni said, Vice Principal, call her, like, Miss New Jen, Miss New Jen, come here. And Yanni went to her. And when Yanni was, she said, You can't start work tomorrow.
have at least so much that I will and sleep one night and if you know there are girls in the house, you know that I stand up and pump this little girl goes to sleep and sleep almost right through the night. But I couldn't sleep. I got up the next morning and I wasn't in a convention not a prayer mode. I just sat on the chair and I started talking and I said, Jesus, this is what is happening. I can't turn anyway because I just can't turn and you're my father. And I remember the words of the bishop, put your case to God. I wasn't kneeling, I was just sitting there, my hands were open and I was just talking. And I put the case straight forward and I said, this is what I can't, I can't do anything to help this person. But I know you are my father and when I come to you, you are going to fix it for me. In all honesty, I, I was just there, maybe a little more frustrated than anything else. I never even thought of calling anybody. I was just there talking to him, talking to him. Good. When I was finished, I sat down and I didn't say anything. Because Bishop said anything to wait for an answer. And I don't know if it's me or in my mind or anything. But something said, get up, get dressed, and go check a person. And I called the family member and said, we're going down the road, get on, put on your clothes, and she goes, I said, no, I don't want to with that. Come right now. And the two of us went, and I knocked on the person's gate, after two knocks, he came, and I said, this is A, this is B, and this is C. I need your help. And he said, um, you know that A happened B. And I said, but I said, yes, I know I was there with you. But this is something that you need to fix. Because I can't move. I mean, I could be because some of the things I can't say right things for. And he said, all right, miss, all right, miss. Um, just get a number for me. Just get a number for me and give me the number. And you know that um, she, she wants a, a, a little phone. I'm going to put a little phone and to it so you know. And I stood there and I said, God, I'm Jesus. Because when we trust in God, when we trust in God and put our faith in God, He is an on time God. And Sister Pina, may I request her to sing a song for me? and you're right on time. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And this, we have each other's back. We have each other's back in prayer. And Bishop, thanks for your teachings. Because they teach us that we go to God. We're not to complain that the old line on case and justify it. And God just comes through for us.
in the Lord. And the topic this morning, faith, you know, it's a journey. And I am not seeing that I'm carrying what my husband has said, but it's a journey that we are taking. And let me tell you, living by faith, living by faith. It's everything, it's a consistent thing and we have to do it every single day. Now, not only is he in his world now, but I'm in mine. And uh, it's a situation where there's one room, here is one room. There he goes, here I go. And it's a faith-based thing. We plan and we put God in front of everything that we are doing now. And over the months, over the weeks, we have been seeing the results, we have been reaping the reward up to this morning. This morning. And this is how it happens. We have been we have the situations and we have been praying about them. And the end result from me, the answer that I've got is every time that I pray, I always have this, it is done. I'm walking in the house, it is done. I'm on the street, anywhere I am at, and the thought just come to me, everything it ends with, it, it is done. And there was a situation and I was praying about it, and the answer came this morning. And I was in the kitchen, and it's like, a belly full, oh, I eat nothing at all. I was just getting ready to come to church. And when I came, and the scripture that was read, and it's all about faith. I remember Brother Parkinson, who spoke about the Sunday, Sunday night on, he spoke about the membership. He owed him an awful of faith, and, the, and Jesus was asleep, but he was speaking in that terms. And I said, look at this comeback this morning again. And I was saying, it's all about faith. And brethren, I just want to keep continuing. We may not be seeing each other, but when, they, when things go, our way. You have to give God thanks for it. And it's not on our way that anything is being done. It is through Him, through our faith. And today I'm saying to you, I'm basking and I'm feeling very much blessed because of what God is doing in not just my life, in our family setting life. God has been good. And for that reason, not seeing each other, let us want to pray for each other. Show love everything that we can to each other. Because it's through faith through faith, continuous prayer that we are going to work, that we are going to survive. And one of these days, it's not an easy road. It's not an easy road that we are traveling on. And sometimes we are weak, sometimes we are frail, sometimes we don't know what tomorrow may bring. But if we just continue to trust God, and I'm telling you, from going on, I even said to my, said to my husband, I said, look here, you're not leaving me, no, I'm coming. Just every time you move up to head, I say, wait for me, I'm coming. You understand? Because it's a thing we are to draw each other together. And God has the deal. He is a good God. If there is stories to be told, as he said before, it will take hours and hours over the months that God has been doing. We may not look like we are we are anywhere at all, but God has been working on the inside. And my God is truly, truly amazing. There are others that are praying for us, there are other persons in this world that are praying for us. It will be numerous of our persons need, but God has been good in everything that we have been doing. And so far we are still continuing, still going on with it. Because in these closing times, who could it be? Everything we have to leave it to him. And for us today, I just feel I just wanted to come into church this morning. I don't know why, but I just wanted to be in his presence. And God has been good at it, has been offered to us. Let's make it, let's take this chance and make it wise. Continue to be faithful, continue to live by faith as we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Your grace and mercy.
morning, I just want to give God thanks. Because if it was not for faith and trust in God, my mother would not be here today. And that was a that is a testimony for me. Because for the past month and about three weeks, my mom was very, very, very ill. She got the COVID. She had underlying sickness. I didn't even know my mother was dieting. But my sister, God took my sister from Trinidad and take her to Jamaica. Because I am living in Portland, my mom is living in St. Catherine. And my, God took my sister, gave her a flight, the first flight out of Trinidad for about, from last year she wanted to come to Jamaica, from November. But God took her at the right time to come and my mom was feeling ill. Didn't know what she's going from doctor to doctor, but my sister said to me, I am going to take her to the doctor tomorrow. The day that my sister was supposed to take my mom to the doctor, she was she could not even move. And my sister got her father the next day and he took to her. She took her to the us to the doctor, a private doctor. She said she's going to let them run some tests. And when the doctor run the test, the first thing that the doctor sees, my mother lungs was closing in. There was two lungs in her chest closing in. If it was not that day she had been to the doctor, my mother would be laid in her grave. But I pray and I cry and I pray and I cried. I mentioned it one time that my mom was in the hospital on a Sunday night in Sunday night um, service. But Sister Holly over there, oh my God, she knows everything. One other time I said I was going to call my pastor and I said, no, I'm not going to call him. I am going to prove God for myself. And I cried. And I cried. And I prayed. And I cried. And Sister Allen said to me, say, you know how to pray. You know how to talk to God. And I talked to God. Every day I said, God, put my mother through because I know it's not her time. And you have, have me for a living testimony for her. And the day I went to, my mother went emergency mother of fact, they sent her to Chess Hospital. And I went over there this Sunday. That's when I know all the things about my mom. Because I didn't know my mom was diabetic. And she wasn't taking care of that part. So her body was drained. Drained. And I came and I cried. And I prayed. And I prayed and I lift up my faith to God. And when I went back to the hospital, they, each and every time I go to town, I have to bring things for her and stuff like that. It was hard, but God made a way. He provided it that I could have bring it for her each and every time. And the last time when I go over there and I bring things, she called me and said, she's not in that ward no more. She's not in the isolation ward no more. She's on the ward. And I said, thank you. When, when the doctor said to me, two prescriptions. One of them was for $130,000. And I said, God, am I going to get this money? No, and one is for $239,000. When I went there and I showed the doctor, the doctor said, no man, she's getting that one under the bottom, that the second one. Oh my God. And I still prayed. And I still prayed. When I went back again and said to the doctor, doctor, I call everywhere and I can't get this medication. She said, no, said to me, how long did you get that prescription? And I tell him. And he said, oh my God, she already overcome that because her body has been healed by the mighty name of Holy Jesus. Hallelujah! Jesus! Hallelujah! I went there the Thursday and when she went on the ward, Friday I got a call and my mom said she has been discharged. Yes. And all the prayers have been pelting out to God. I pelt to all. I cried. I cried and I asked God, I said, Father, I want you to give me a living testimony. And I told my mother, I said, if God put you through this, I need for you. Because
because she has been baptized, but you know, unruly parents, although some of us are unruly at times. And I said to her, I said, Mom, if God put you through this and take you out, you have to continue to praise Him, give Him all, because when there is nothing out there for you to live for anymore. But just praise God, give Him all that you have, and see how God will work out a way for you. And that's my faith. My faith is a faith, and you have faith in God and trust in Him. And I am going to continue to trust in the Lord, my God, for everything. Whenever I am going to step one step, I say, Lord, come before me. Step. When then I look and see your footprints, I know I can step in it because I am stepping in faith. And my faith is continue to trust in the Lord and believe in Him that all things are possible through Him. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth.
to bed. Oh, I know that. I know that God can do anything. I know that He can do anything. But when I hear it coming from Brother Williams, that He's humble. Oh my God! What a God! What? Missionary Williams is going to be coming and we're going to be collecting the offering as she comes. But that is what prayer can do. Yes. And we continue to pray, saints of God. We are on a noon day, we are on Monday nights, we are on Wednesday nights, and we are on at 12 o'clock. Join us if you can. That is what prayers can do. Let us continue to pray in Jesus' name.
different kinds of faith. And we, we know a lot of company and work called confidence. And a confidence is very, very similar in certain things. But when it comes to God, your belief in a supreme being, it has to be faith based. So the Bible speaks of the gift of faith. Now many of us don't have that gift. It is said that we have for the gifts which are uh, more where what? I'm just going to skip for it. But it's more exciting when you have the gift of healing and the gift of miracles because people follow you and talk about you and it's all of that because you know but faith is personal. Faith is personal. Why healing and miracles happen instantaneously? And I heard somebody with it. Faith takes time. Takes time. And that's why many of us, or many people don't go for faith or the gift of faith. Because it takes too long. You don't know how long you're going to have to have to, to have that faith. It takes long. But they want the they know. scripture that was read and the same scripture from the book of Matthew chapter 8 and it is also in Mark 4 and Luke 8 the, when you read some uh, commentaries and so it tells you they are not the same that the same type of event but it was not the same event I don't know, it's debatable. Okay, Mark 4 and then Luke 8. But I'm dealing today with Matthew because they're really very similar. And it speaks about uh, a number of things are happening. A number of things. And I, I don't want to point out details because that's what he gives to me. So the Bible says. And, uh, oh no, I missed my page. Okay, I'm getting there. Yes, when the evening was come. No. No, I am trying no penetrate. And when the Lord entered into a ship, and so you can see that a number of things were happening, came to the end of the day and they entered into a ship. Some said it's a boat, but whatever it was, that they said that those fishing boats were big enough to accommodate the apostles and Jesus. They were uh, powered by, by sails and they were and they had oars. Okay? In, in, in the time of a storm, you lower the sail and you use the oar. And so in the sand went on the Sea of Galilee. On a place of sand. Sea of Galilee is said is 30 miles uh, long by seven miles wide. It is said that why it was a storm really because of the location. It is said it's over 700 feet. It is hard to imagine below sea level. So everything came down on it and when it hits there, it can just happen suddenly. It's like when Jesus was ever entered the boat, there was nothing. But as you get in there and move up, then there was a record of the geographics of the Sea of Galilee. 700 feet below sea level. Wow. Okay. You know what right. we, we, we don't understand we don't see them much, but we don't see them like like what I told you is on sea level. So when the wind the, 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 when the, when, it, when the waves dash against the shore, 
He got, he got really going to pop. In the second hurricane, get about that the waves rose up to 40 feet and slammed against the land. It is said that on that ship that I mean, it broke up to 20. 20 feet. It was terrible. They were all in the ship. And Jesus went to the bottom where one of it is. And, and we're not talking about a passenger ship. We're talking about a fishing boat, a big fishing boat. But we're not as big as ours. And we always use um, the length of them to describe them. So what is a 40 foot boat, 20 foot boat, and you're going to understand what they're like. And they went into this boat and they went because it was going across. I want us to find more details again. When you find uh, Jesus said, we are going across. Some of those by the sea and lake are intertwined. What they call sea or called the lake because of geographics. But they are going on the other side. It is good to have an experience with Jesus on this side. But there's a time we want you to have another experience. He says, go on the other side. And he's showing us how difficult it is. After you have started from, from this side to that side, the difficulties that you can encounter. Even choosing eternal life from this natural life, we are accustomed to this life. And that all anybody wants to live this life because of we are accustomed. But the Lord said, the other side, and the other side meaning that there is a qualification, there's a journey. And, and, and things ain't be the same on the other side. Wow. So why we see this side, the other side is by faith. Because we don't see the other side. But we know this side. So many religions only hold on to this side. Your hope is in this side. And Christianity is the only religion that offers life on this side and on the other side. Believe it. Anyway, look at the so the wind. Some Bible will tell you, let me check uh, this writing. And uh, and he said, alright, so then move from there and behold there was a great tempest I like to teach so behold whenever you see behold you are about to see something unusual okay and the same the companion word mean the same thing is low low but in our Jamaican colloquial language, when we want to emphasize something, we say, Sister Pino, low and behold. The two things mean the same, but we double for emphasis. Are we there? We are in that mode today. Low and behold, there was a tempest. And it described what happened. And as far as Jesus they were concerned. Jesus was sleeping. Why did we can discuss his humanity and divinity? You can discuss that divinity seemed to have been, been at rest. But that humanity, but divinity never needs rest. And there's, there are two sides of Jesus, the humanity and the divinity. So divinity is never at rest. But you could always say, it seemed as if humanity was at rest. And the wind was tempestuous. Now, these men, most of them were fishers. So, they are, they are, they are not afraid by tempestuous sea. They are accustomed to, to wind and waves and that. The Bible said that it was so much that the waves 
were coming over into the boat. And if it's not the same thing, the other writer said, it was almost fun. Water came over in the boat. And if you understand the, the, the logics of it, when this is happening, they are trying to bail it out as fast as it comes. But when it comes that way, it is coming in more than they can bail. So they say, they see themselves now that this is ending for danger and the boat after a while is, uh, is going to sink. That's the story. So they cried out to Jesus. And it was the same story in, in, in all in the, in, in the tree. The, 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 the Lord said, why are ye fearful? Now that would seem as a very, you know, funny question. A very hard question. We look and see the water and the humanity and, and your patience was it is really kept already the point. Where are you there for? And it an answer. He was upset. What is this? Is this obvious? It is obvious. Right? It has to put from. And some bad people wonder, why are you? Yeah, because they don't see things the way that they are seeing. And he said to them, Oh ye, I, I want you to look at some oh ye of me. So in this version of it, if it's the same version, he said all that before he rebuked the wind. The other version said, he rebuked the wind and then said, where is your faith? But this is where I'm going. And my thought to us today, oh yeah, where is your faith? Or where is your faith? My thing is faith, and I'm not showing this one. Give this, there are some sermons, you can't, you can't throw it. It's for all of us, including your school. Now, Jesus is on board. You are accustomed to, naturally, you will be fearful. Naturally, the boat is about to sink. Naturally, we are in disaster. But this one thing is not natural. Jesus is on board. Jesus is on board. So they know the kind of God that can prevent storm. They know the God that can work miracles. They know the God that can uh, make the impossible possible.
Where is the faith? Where is the faith? If you do it, Lord, it's still God. If you don't do it, God, it's still God. If you heal me, it's still God. Get a good blessing from the Lord. Because it's not, no, that's not me, that's opposite of me. But it's that bad song coming out of the car in the church. We shall say, I want God to pray with him. No. Because normally, he will not do that, not at all. But this brother with him, this one, the real one, not the proverbial brother with him. Whether God give me or don't give me, my prayer will be in the enemy. I am a shadow. We keep praising you when you give, when you don't give. 
will keep praising you when you just be God. Just keep in God. Just keep in God. Because the faith that we have, Lord, is that you are in the boat. You are. You are in the boat. And as long as you are in the boat, we can perish. Even if we lose our life down here, even if we be in the presence of the Lord up there, touch us, Lord, as we pray. And be humble to recognize the sovereignty that you are God and God alone. I thought we sang that song today, Jesus. You are God alone. I'm not sure. Ah, bless us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be the power of faith. You are God alone. We are our sins.